Welcome and uh, in this uh, video uh, we will be looking at uh, the statistical test uh, of stationary how to determine if a time series is stationary. Specifically we will be looking at uh, two statistical tests one is uh, ADF or, uh, or the augmented uh, Dickey Fuller test and the KPSS uh, test and I will be also giving you a cheat sheet combination uh, in which after you have used both um, ADF and KPSS you know uh, what you need to do if uh, the two tests are not in sync uh, with uh, each other. So let's get started and this is going to be a really uh, interesting video. Okay, now in the previous video we saw that you know stationarity of data uh, at times uh, you can observe and conclude but most of the time you need something more uh, than exploratory data analysis and that's the re a reason fortunately we have um, uh, two tests one is the uh, ADF and the KPSS test okay and um, they both work on the concept of null and uh, null and alternate hypothesis uh, which you know from your uh, high school uh, mathematics okay so let's first look at um, the ADF test the ADF test is the augmented uh, Dickey, uh, Dickey Fuller test and the null hypothesis which is A0 uh, assumes that the time series is not stationary. So friends remember the null hypothesis here in ADF test is that the time series is not stationary. So if the null hypothesis A0 is not stationary the alternate hypothesis is uh, that the time series is stationary which you can see. Now if A0 is true if uh, if the null hypothesis is true which means um, uh, if uh, if uh, the time series is not stationary in the back end it works on a concept of uh, unit root so if you have unit root okay it it is it means it is danger okay see here i've written if you if you have unit root here in a time series and i'll explain to you uh, later what is unit root but for now uh, there is a thing called as unit root uh, in time series and if you have the unit root in a time series um, it's sort of danger it's a term i remember i i am using to remember and it means that it is not stationary why not stationary is danger because in time series we will see in future in future videos that you need stationarity of the data in certain models like the auto regressive model and if you if you are dealing with a uh, stationary time series your prediction models um, uh, are better and it is you can initiate those model only on stationary um, uh, time series if you use those models like auto regressive models on non -station, uh, stationary time series uh, that uh, the model explodes but we'll see those in the upcoming video for now we know and in from previous videos also that we need stationary of data and unit root uh, prevents that from happening so again coming back to ADF if you have your alter, uh, null hypothesis as true, which means that there is a unit root and it means that my time series is not stationary. And if that's the case, um, your alternate hypothesis happens when your H1 is true. So your alternate uh, hypothesis, if, um, if H0 is rejected, then your H1 is true. And if your H1 is true, which means your time series is stationary, and this is because there is no unit root, and that's the reason your time series is stationary. Understood? Now, in Python, when you when you apply this through the APIs, the at fuller test, you, you the first thing you need to see is a p-value. And if your p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.5, then your uh, time series is uh, stationary. And the opposite, if you have if you get, uh, then it is non-stationary. So how do you sum it up? First, to apply the ADF uh, in, uh, in in Python and see what is the p-value we are getting. If the p-value is uh, less than or equal to uh, 0 0.05, then there is no unit root and uh, there, then the time series is stationary. So that is the ADF or augmented decay fuller test. Okay. The opposite is the KPSS test in which the null hypothesis is H0 is that the time series is stationary just opposite to what there was in ADF. In ADF the null hypothesis assumes that the time series is not stationary. In KPSS the assumption the null hypothesis is that the time series is stationary. Clear? So obviously now if H0 is uh, time series uh, is stationary H1 or the alternate hy hypothesis would be that the time series is not stationary because you know you know from your high school mathematics 
that your h0 is 1 minus h1 so together uh, they form one probability right now here if h0 is true what is h0 that the time series is stationary which means that there is no unit root and hence the time series is stationary similarly if h0 is rejected which means h1 is true and if h1 is true the time series is not stationary so it is just opposite okay so if you if you know one uh, the other is just opposite of the other okay here also the similarly you can check the p values and conclude uh, whether uh, the time series is stationary or not the python implementation we will look at it later but here i am talk, talking about the main concept now there could be a question you can say that anirban it could be possible <coughs> that you know i do a test for a time series but you know adf is showing stationary and kpss is not showing non stationary or vice versa what do i do in situation where you know uh, one um, one of the test is not in uh, sync uh, with, uh, with the other test what 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 do i do um, uh, in uh, such a case all right to uh, the thing which um, you can do uh, in uh, such a case is uh, you know um, you can i have given you a cheat table and in this cheat table uh, I have given the combinations of what are the outcomes that are coming in ADF, KPSF and the conclusion. So there could be four combinations and let's look at um, uh, each of the combinations. So case one, ADF testing um, tells you that your time series is not uh, stationary. So I am in case one and in case one your ADF uh, is telling that uh, my uh, time series is not uh, stationary. KPS is also agreeing to that. So both uh, ADF and KPS is uh, same. Both are saying it is non-stationary. It's no brainer. Then it's an easy case. If both the tests are telling you that your time series is non-stationary, then your conclusion as a data scientist should be that my time series is not stationary. Period. Okay. You go to case two. In case two, both the tests are telling you that my time series is stationary. So that is also good that both my tests are in sync with me. So I will conclude that my time series is stationary, correct? Now the problem comes when both of the tests do not agree and then that's the reason that is our third and fourth case uh, in our cheat sheet. Okay, in the third case, what I am saying, I am saying that my AD of test is telling that my time series is not uh, stationary. My KPSS is telling me that my time series is stationary. So this condition, this is a new term. This condition we call as trend stationary. <clears throat> when this option happens, in which your ADF is telling it is non-stationary and uh, your KPSS is telling that your time series is stationary. So in this case, you have hit a condition where your time series probably is trend stationary and what you need to do? You need to remove the trend. How do I remove the trend? That's what the next video is when we will be talking about uh, differencing and box box uh, transformation and we'll do some kind of log transformation and see uh, how it uh, plays out. Okay, so the, so you need to remove trend if this is your combination. The final combination which is the case 4 in our cheat sheet, in our cheat table rather, okay, uh, in which my ADF is saying that my time series is stationary, I repeat. ADF is telling uh, my time series is stationary and my KPSS test is telling my time series is non-stationary then what what this case which you are landing up is a case which is called as difference stationary and you need to do differencing okay it's differencing you have to take the minus subtraction of the two time series it's not differentiation it's differencing okay so these two things, you know, how do we remove trend? How do you do differencing? Uh, what is the role of box box transformation in such cases? That we'll see in the next video. But this combination, this cheat table, you must remember. So the image of this thing you will get in the description. So check the description of the video uh, to see the picture, a JPEG picture of this uh, particular whiteboard. Okay. Now <coughs> recall in the first part of the video. I said that you know I remember that unit root you know this it's like um, um, when I when I speak to myself I always keep in mind that unit root is not good it's danger because it 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 it, it uh, puts uh, the time series in the non-stationary mode 
and the whole KPSS and the ADF testing is based on finding an unit root. Now, what is uh, what is unit root? Okay, in unit root, uh, we we have a property of uh, a time series wherein uh, if a value changes uh, and after some time, if the value the change value again comes back to its home to its base from which was changed then uh, that means there is no unit root but if there is a presence of an unit root once the value changes or once the value goes up or goes down that change becomes permanent uh, in a uh, time series so let's see with a small uh, uh, example so i have um, um, uh, i have a case wherein my sales of today depends my sales of uh, tomorrow uh, depends on the sales i have done today Imagine what I'll be selling tomorrow. I might be selling any commodity. So what I'll be selling tomorrow depends on the sale of today. Okay. So I can have an equation that my sales of uh, tomorrow, uh, which is given by yt, okay, is given by a constant c plus a1, which is the coefficient, and this coefficient will determine uh, the unit root. Y of t minus one. What is y of t minus one? Is 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 my sales. Uh, that I had today, you know, the previous period, because I am forecasting for tomorrow, and tomorrow is y to y of t. If tomorrow is y of t, today is y t minus one. Correct? One day before, and then I have um, z, uh, z of t minus one is some randomness. So this is some randomness. In any case, that this is I am giving uh, for the mathematical completeness, we will not predict it because it is randomness, and hence we put it zero. So initiate the equation uh, uh, with z of t minus one as zero, and then c also the first constant will put at um, uh, put at uh, zero because that is uh, the level. So we'll we'll take the mean as zero, okay? And then in first case, so this is case one, we take a one as 0.5. <clears throat> so if you take a one as 0.5, look at this carefully. Your y of t becomes zero. Why zero? Because your c is zero. 0.5, why 0.5? Because your a1 is uh, 0.5, and then 100. Imagine I'm st starting with um, 100 was my sales today, so uh, I'll use that, and uh, plus uh, the randomness is zero, so we get 50. So my sales of tomorrow is going to be half, and the sales day after tomorrow will go is going to be, you know, uh, 25, 12.5. It will continue because it is becoming half, half, half. At certain stage, it will come, and it will come close to zero right so you can see that uh, um, this uh, this time series will come to, will come home to the value of c and what was our value of c zero so you have zero when c is, is, is equal to zero okay the time series is eventually converging towards zero and since the time series is converging uh, from where the c value was there is no presence of uh, unit root. Now, if you apply the same logic and try to do with a is equal to 1, you will see that the time series will never converge to the initial value of 0, uh, initial value of c, which is 0 in this case. So, when a1 is equal to 1, this you will see that it, this, this is a case which is an unit root, and that time series, in, if you take as this basic example, this will not converge. Okay. So, that is a very brief mathematical. Um, uh, intuition uh, towards it okay and i hope uh, this was helpful in getting some mathematical in intuition behind uh, and this unit root concept is used behind the adf and kpss uh, testing so i think um, uh, that's all about this video and um, you can see uh, the image of this whiteboard in the description uh, do like subscribe if you have any questions comment and do check um, uh, the description uh, for any um, for any cool um, offers uh, which we are running okay thank you so much and i'll be catching up in the next video in which we'll be looking at uh, this part ex uh, is, is specifically where you will see how to do uh, differencing of time series and how to deal and what is the use of uh, box cox uh, transformation especially with uh, log transformation so thank you so much. I'll catch up with you in the next video.